following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey, hello, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. Sorry, you guys, we started a minute late. That was my fault. We were talking to our guest, and, uh, and we didn't realize that it was already 12 o'clock. So what's up, everybody? Before we get started, let me introduce my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Ron Russell. And, and Astro! Yay, Astro! And chat room, what's up? We got people in the chat room. Hey, Boomer, how you doing? Don Hinton's in the chat room. Cindy Lady Lake's in the chat room. Hub Reynolds is in the chat room. Yeah. We got a, show, a good, good, good show for you guys today. Our first guest is Lee Purcell, um, and she's an actress who's been in a bunch of cool things. And then we have Charlie Z from Drumageddon, who is Drumageddon. Charlie Z is Drumageddon. And Ron and I met him also at the 911 Benefit Charity Concert. He was uh, the headliner at the charity concert for Soho Johnny's thing back in 2000, I don't know, two years ago, I think, for the September no, 11th say, thing. I was 23 years old, so how many years ago? Yeah, right yeah. I was 23. So all is good. And I want to tell everybody, if Tears for Fears comes to your town, last night, Ron's two daughters, Leslie Deirdre and I, who are my stepdaughters, we went and saw the Cold War Kids and Tears for Fears. And Tears for Fears was the great. It was so great. It wasn't even funny. We had a blast. Um, the whole arena was sold out, and we had a really, really good time. And I didn't even remember all the hits that Tears for Fears had. You know, I remembered like four of them, but they actually have way more than that. So it was really cool, and we had a great time. So if Tears for Fears comes to your town, definitely you want to go see them. The reason I didn't go is I don't like standing for hours. <clears throat> I don't like the crowds. I don't like the sound system. I prefer to hear them on my uh, recorded. You know, they sound better. Um, they're live. You know, I'm in the business. They don't, it doesn't excite me. But I can understand people who are not in show business who get a thrill at seeing these people live on the stage. Uh, so for me, you know, for me, it's no big deal. It was one of the. And if I'm not invited into the green room, I wouldn't go anyway. It's one of the most iconic bands, I think, of the 80s. And the fact that everybody's getting older and these people aren't going to be going on tour forever. So it's nice to go see them all. Because uh, they were really, really Say good. hello to Astro. Astro, say, to Astro, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Who are you? This is Astro speaking. So, yay. <laughs> That's so cute. All right. So what's everybody doing? I hope everybody's having a good time. In the heat. It's hot all over the country. We were like 121 degrees, I think. <laughs> you know, only New York is beautiful, 82 degrees. How perfect oh. is that? Astro, you want to get down, honey? You want to sit on me the whole show? That's what are you going to do, sweetheart? Hopefully you guys in the chat room can see here and see the chat and everything. I'm, yes. I'm hoping that you guys got it. Okay. So uh, it's 12.08. What do you want to talk about? What do we do this weekend? We didn't well, do anything I want to we? talk about the strike. Uh, we are getting somewhere. Fran Drescher is tough. I mean, the little nanny has a mouth. Well, she's a New Yorker from Flushing and Bayside, one town away from where I came from. So Fran and I, I, you know, I know her, and uh, we're, see, we're equal. You know, we're New Yorkers. We tell it like it is. It's about time. And Fran is getting somewhere, and she's really making it happen, and I adore her. I may make a movie with her. She may play my wife. We're working on it. Okay, hang on. I can't talk about it, but we're working on it. Um, what are you doing, typewriting? Yeah, I'm typing because like they're having a problem. I'm working on it, you guys. Hey, no, you guys, I just sent one. It says the video is playing on Facebook, but it's not playing on YouTube. Oh. Um, so I'm I'm uh, letting letting him know. Hang on, you guys. Uh, and they want more, and they don't want to give us money. Does YouTube include it in that Netflix thing? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. 
for well, us. I to guess so it. because they are, they do play uh, old movies on uh, YouTube, uh, right? Yes. We, we don't get paid for any of our movies that were. That's good. No, we don't stream. We we would get paid for the show on YouTube, except for that you have to get millions and millions of people to watch it, and people don't watch our show; they listen to it mostly. Most of our millions of people oh, are listening to our we show. We want to tell watching. people, don't listen, watch our show. Our show is visual as much as it is here. It's fun to listen to if you're in a car. But if you're home, tune in. We're on a cell phone. We're on everything. No matter what device you have, tune in to our show. We're there. And you'll see us. Because, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And like me looking at Jimmy with such adoration, okay. like this, watch, watch. Okay, so now they're watching us on, on Facebook. See, the okay. radio people don't know what it looked like, but the TV people know. Watch, I'll do it again. Let's see. Um, he ignores me. Sorry. I'm trying to work this out so people can see us. I <sighs> work nothing talk. I mean, usually talk when we get started. So I, I, talk I'm, about I'm something. I'm tired of talking, Jim. And then you yell at me. You say, you never let me talk on No, not show. when I'm like having stuff and to do. And then I let you talk and then you put people to sleep or you just don't know what you're talking about or whatever. So I have to jump in and say, oh, no. what is that? I, I'm, tr well, I'm trying to get it, but I can't throw it in here. You guys go on Facebook Tell, to watch the chat. What about our engineer? Let our engineer do it. Go on. He said he did it. I just Jose, do it. it. Jose. Juan. Juan, Jose, same thing. Okay, he said he put it it's in the Jewish comments. Name. Okay. It's a Jewish name. Okay, there it is. It's in there. All right. Can you see us? I wonder now? if I can go there then, too, and see. Can it. you see me, Mama? Papa, can you see? Remember Barbara Streisand? She sang that beautiful song, Papa, Can You See Me? My father had just passed away. And that was the first movie that I'd gone to since he passed away. And when she began to sing, Papa, Can You? Uh, see me. It was a very emotional moment for me. It was only a moment, but it was emotional. <laughs> I can't log in though. To Jim, what's going there. on? Huh? Just, just talk for a minute. Talk, talk. You want me to sing and dance? No. Da, 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 da. Shh, shh. I mean, come on. Uh, I can't log into Facebook to be able to, to, to chat with people. I'm trying to make it so I can uh. chat. So just talk. I mean, they all, they're all in a different window than I am, and I'm trying to work Why it out. Why do these things happen? It's, it's a YouTube thing. A YouTube thing. YouTube, get it right. You know, you have enough of our shows, you have thousands of our shows on your network that people watch and that we don't get paid for. Hmm. I'm going to go uh, on it through my phone, but I can't get on it from here. So, uh, B. Claudia, thanks, B. B's going to send me the link so I can see what's going on. Uh, and I'll go and switch to the Why other Why can't chat. Jose fix it? One, because it's not one. Because it's it's a YouTube problem, not a one problem. <laughs> well, what, 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 whatever you're supposed to fix, why doesn't he fix it? I'm not fixing it. I want to join it. Join what? Okay, never mind. Just uh, he's got a link and he's sending it for Facebook, so I can go on Facebook and communicate with people. Otherwise, so See, I, I can't people talk think to that them. I'm there the bitchy evil one because no, because you don't. I yell at him and I threaten to punch him to a wall. All right, but I'm not. All right, here we one. are. I'm the nice guy. Let's, Let's see now. Here we go. All right. I'm here. All right. I'm He's the best. Oh, everybody's go. here. All He's right, everybody. Guy. We're on Facebook Live now. Instead, you guys, Hub's here. Cindy's here. Um, um, and I'm here. So perfect. All right. All right, you guys. So we're going to have a great show for you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, our first guest uh, is going to be coming back in like two minutes. Um, in the meantime, let's do a quick commercial. You can hear the show, you guys, every week on SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, iTunes. Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Prime. Those are all the main places that you can watch the show and listen to the sh here to see the show uh, afterwards, you guys. But um, we're on like 160 more platforms after that. So we're on about 180 platforms total. Um, we're seen all over the world. Yes. Um, uh, hell, uh, it's okay. no big deal, by the way. You know, most people would say, oh, wow. Could you imagine the whole world sees you? No. You know why? We don't know it. We don't know that they see us. We have no idea who they are. It's not like when you do a show on a stage, like I did for years. I worked the stage, as you know. <clears throat> I love bo the boards. are the best. Because the audience is there, and you see the audience, and you know who you're playing to. But when you're on a show for, with 5 million people, you have not a clue who they are, what they are, where they are. So it doesn't mean anything. I just think like I'm talking into a camera. No big deal. 
So what we're going to do real quick, uh, we're going to play the trailer for Purgatorium, and when we come back, our guest will be here. Purgatorium, Purgatorium is on the Jimmy Star guys. production. It's a non-union film, and, non -union. Uh, and it's uh, on um, Tubi TV right now, streaming for free, so check out the trailer for it, because it's my film. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> So what is this double? I'm, 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 I'm stuck in here. Who put you up to this? No one did, sir. I gave it to you in writing, Bart. In black and white. I really don't want to hurt you, man. Then don't. Evil is with us. No! Hey! A wise man once said, life is like a squeeze. If you're doing it, and you're not doing it, it does not stop. Stay up there! <laughs> No. The funny thing about streams, though, once it's off course, you can never change it back. All right, everybody. So that's Purgatorium. It's on. Uh, it's on Tubi TV, and you can watch it. I watched it. It's a good film, and not because Jimmy produced it, because it, if, uh, it was psychological a thriller. Yeah, but if it was a lousy film. I would simply say, watch it with nothing further. But I would have liked to have been in it. I could have played the old guy. Oh, easy, easily. You know, violent, big mouth, yelling, screaming. That's my thing. But Jimmy did a good production on this film, and he's producing a lot more of which we cannot talk about because we are on strike. Right, Jim? Right. I would be out there with a uh, thing, you know, a, a protesting sign. All right, so. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> My heart doctor said, Ron, no. You've had open heart surgery. We don't want you out in the heat, screaming and yelling. I said, OK. OK, so let's go. We're going to bring in our first guest, everybody. I, I couldn't see that she was in there, but now she, I know she's there. So let's bring her in. Hey, how you doing? Doing great. How are you guys doing? We're fantastic. Good. All right, everybody. Now we Waiting want to wait, wait. For you. That's what we're doing. That was my fault because I couldn't see if she was there or not. Hey, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, two-time primetime Emmy nominee, Lee Purcell. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you and thank you for having me on. And I loved that trailer. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's fun. It's you know what? It's our budget. pleasure. You don't have to thank us for being on. We thank you for being on. And I want to thank my old buddy, the very handsome, sexy Harlan Boyle. Oh, yeah. Boyle. I, call, oh I call him Boyle. <laughs> I've, been call, I've been calling him Boyle. Even Chippy Hedren called him Boyle. Oh, my God. It's, well, it is bowl like a cotton bowl. Like a cotton bowl. Yeah. But I think a lot of people I know him. For, I, know him for about, I know him for about 30 years. When I first, I, yeah, when I first met him, oh my God, I thought he was the handsomest, sexiest man I'd ever seen. Yes, actually. His wonderful beard. And I think I had a quick crush on him for a minute. So hold on, let's introduce. So first of all, this what, is my co-host, Ron Russell. Uh, since she, she'd never met us and we're officially meeting now, even though we talked earlier. And we're the first gay married couple to have a TV show that is so successful. That we're the <laughs> number one uh, stream web show. web show in the world. And we were Emmy nominated and we have a lot of other stuff. So we're happy about that, that we are permitted to be who we are. Yay! Yay. So, so we have a chat room uh, filled with people. The chat room is a little bit split up. So just say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everybody. And also, I want to let everybody know, if you want to follow Lee, she is on social media. You can follow her on Instagram under The Lee Purcell. And she's got a website, and it's LeePurcell.com. And make sure you spell Purcell right. It's P-U-R-C-E-L-L. -L. Mm -hmm. Like you see on the screen if you're watching. Right. Now, I'm going to discuss something with her and a reason why. We are not permitted to mention any of the movies that she's in. And I will have Lee tell us, I mean, I know, tell you guys out there why. I don't want you to think that her movies stink and that's why we didn't mention <laughs> them. No, otherwise they're going to, because I always say. Well, a couple do, actually. But. I, always, <laughs> I, always, I always say, if the movie's not good, I don't badmouth it. I just don't mention it. 
So I don't want them to think. That's the polite. Because you had some great films, my dear, with some big, big movie stars. Which we can talk about the movie stars. No, a but little some bit, of them I know, so we're allowed to talk about. We're, well, we can talk about people. We just can't. Oh, sure. So, uh, so here's the thing is that um, our union, SAG-AFTRA, is on strike. And so there are certain things that we are prohibited from doing. Um, one of them is um, working in a project, <laughs> working in a project that is uh, AMPTP, well, that's the Association Association of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Um, if, they're, if it's affiliated with that, um, there are interim agreements that can happen, it's all very complex, boring stuff. But just so you understand why I can't talk about certain films or TV shows, whatever, that I've done. Uh, because another thing we're prohibited from doing is promoting film and TV shows, no matter how old, no matter whatever. We can't do it because it drives money into the pockets of the people we are negotiating against or with. Yeah. And so we can't do that. But we can talk about the people who were in those shows. We can talk about life. We can talk about hair. Like we were talking, <laughs> we were talking, yes, before I came on officially, we were talking about hair. And, um, I told and we you, I about, love the strawberry blonde hair, but it did such good work for her face and the color. And that last week we had that beautiful girl on who we were seeing at a birthday party Saturday, and she had this mousy brown hair, and I hated it. And then I didn't say anything. Then she shows us a video of a movie she's in with red hair. I, oh my God, you have to be a redhead. But it's the right color. She did it beautifully. The color goes with your eyes, your lipstick you. is in. Perfect. I, if I if you come in my salon, I would have suggested this lovely strawberry blonde. It used to be called Sunbeam. Oh, you know, I did not know that. I did not. Sunbeam. That's interesting. Sunbeam. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do real quick, I want to brag for two minutes. And I'm just going to start it with mentioning some of the people you've worked with. And then we're going to, um, from there, I want to segue into the Hollywood radio players, because that's something I know we're allowed to talk about. They are, because I produce it, and I'm and not the MPC. You're not a part of it. So, and so, we're on radio right now. So you guys, just what? to <laughs> get an idea, because this is radio and television. So just to get an idea, some of the cool people that she's actually like worked with, these and I'll people. raise my hand if I work with them or no. So these okay. are people she, uh, that Lee Purcell has co-starred opposite um, John Voight, you know, yep. Nicholas Cage, Orson Welles, Charles Bronson, James Garner, Michael and Kirk Douglas, Bo and Lloyd Bridges, and she's also starred opposite Mark Harmon, Malcolm McDowell, who's been on the show, Jan Michael Vincent, Louis Gossett Jr., Chadwick Boseman, Gene Wilder, Robert Young, Richard Thomas, Paul Sorvino, he's been on the show. Barry Boswick, Jack Lord, Tom Selleck, and R.J. Mitt, which I just worked Tom on a movie Selleck, with Tom Selleck, I know. <laughs> so, so yay, so that's just, and that's just some, because I was looking at all the different things. You also did a film in the 80s that we're not gonna mention, but the star of the film was Deborah Foreman, and um, she's a very good friend of ours. She's been on the show like five times. Right. And uh, love her to oh, do that. For all you guys, Nicolas Cage is also in that film, so you probably know what it is, has a great soundtrack. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So you've worked with an incredible, great people, and we're going to talk about it. But first, let's talk a little bit about – tell us what the Hollywood Radio Players Club is. Hollywood Radio Players. I guess it's not club. It's not club. <laughs> <laughs> but that sounded good. I, know, I just made that up. <laughs> that is kind of funny, though. But there's a funny story about that, that somebody – when we first started posting the shows, there was a glitch, and somebody – put club on the end, which we, we don't have. Right. But anyway, it's called Hollywood radio players.com. So Hollywood radio players.com. Or if you're, if you go to YouTube, it's just Hollywood radio players. So uh, I produce it with my wonderful producing partner, Michael Carnegie, who is a genius. And what we do is uh, we recreate classic radio plays uh, with today's actors from, and, and we do it uh, so you can see us. It's, we call it radio you can see. Right. And and we do, do special effects and sound effects and costumes and all kinds of things. It's very complex. It's very elaborate. And, and we've come a long way because we've been doing this for a, about a year. And we just posted a couple of weeks ago 
our 10th show, which uh, is uh, episode one of season two. And it's the Bickersons. And probably a lot of people won't know who the Bickersons were because that was in the 1940s. But the Bickersons were uh, a very, very popular hit show for about 20 years on and off. They came and went. And it was Donna Michi and Francis Langford, who was a big band singer and very popular. And they played a married couple who bickered. Oh, hence this. the Bickersons. And <laughs> I know the show. Okay. But also Lucille Ball did it with, uh, I think, I forgot who. They kind of copied that show. Before she did I Love Lucy, she, my favorite wife was Her the show. Husband. She did My Favorite Husband, yeah. which, favorite was, husband. which was a precursor to um, I Love Lucy, but it was not the Bickersons. The Bickersons was oh, always yeah. just these two people. And, yeah. and it was very interesting that they did it because they started in radio and they went all the way into the 60s doing uh, the Bickerson skits on very popular variety shows and uh, the big variety shows that, that they used to have. And so uh, we did, that's our most recent show. We did War of the Worlds, which uh, I, I directed Bickerson's and also War of the Worlds and something else. So we take turns. Orson Welles War. Or Orson Welles is what we did the original script from 1938, October 31st, 1938. Sure. And um, and it was quite challenging to do that yep. on on visual radio because it's easier to do it, as you guys know, if if you're just hearing it. But when mm -hmm. it's visual, then you have to really I, dress it up, you know, yeah. and you got to do more. So that's your nose. We actually have one uh, that we um, have a bunch of, of modern people in. Uh, it's called Dead X. It hasn't come out yet, um, and it, but we, it's only radio. But it's like radio set from the old right. time. It'll have all the special. It's fun effects. doing it. It's yeah. like a dystopian, uh, like thriller, you know, set away in the future. And mm -hmm. it's called Dead X. And we all recorded it. Are we allowed to um, talk about it? Yeah, we're allowed. Like, are is it going visual? No, it's not going. Well, we might actually do visual if well, it does well as audio. I want to talk yet. about years ago. Lee, I'm a lot older than you are. I'm 83 years old. You probably weren't even born yet. But there was a show called Inner Sanctum that terrified me as a young boy. Why? My sister and you can't I talk would, about shows. This is this is Inner Sanctum. You no. can't find it. It's a hundred years ago. Uh, well, it, it was radio, right? Yes. Uh, if it's radio, it's it okay. was it was 1945. There was no such thing as television. <laughs> yeah, no. so, talk about it all day long. I'm going, to, I'm going to take notes here because we're all telling my sister, who was seven years older than I, to hug me because I was so frightened. Oh. It's a show with a squeaking door. Oh. Well, to the inner sanctum and the stories and my God, terrifying. You know why? I was creating it. I was the producer. I saw the set. I saw the actors. I saw the horror. I saw the fear. I saw the darkness. Terrifying. Radio is absolutely wonderful, and I think what you're doing is terrific. Jimmy and I are driving to New York because we're moving back to the East Coast next year, oh. next spring. I intend to listen to your show the whole trip because I have, you know, I can't watch, I'm driving. But how wonderful is it going to be to hear your show and your movies that wow. I know? Uh, thank you. I really do appreciate that. You know, you can watch them today, uh, whenever, on, I watch you, on YouTube. So I also wrote down some of the ones. So you said War of the Worlds. I wrote down The Hitchhiker, The Life of Riley, Life of Armis Riley. Brooks, oh my Father God. Knows Best, oh. Beauty and the Beast, Gunsmoke, Dragnet, The Bad Man, The Bickersons, and then future productions of Casablanca, Art and Our Town, and The Maltese Falcon. Yes, all, all of that. And also we should mention that um, we do these shows to benefit the Motion Picture and Television Fund which is the industry charity that benefits people in, in need in the motion picture and television industry, which of course, throughout the pandemic, there was a lot of need. And so they uh, really got stretched very thin. And then now, since we have two strikes going on, um, once again, they're getting stretched very thin. So, uh, but you can watch the shows for free. If you choose to donate, if you can uh, donate, any amount at all to the Motion Picture and Television Fund. There's a link there. And the host, we have uh, two wonderful hosts. We have Tom Bergeron 
and we have Lisa Gibbons. Oh, and, like uh, how, funniest videos, right? Uh, Dancing with the Stars. Uh, with the stars. There you go. Hollywood, Hollywood Squares, uh, double Emmy winner. Right. Um, and then Lisa was on um, uh, Entertainment oh, Tonight yeah. for many, yes. many years. And they're both fabulous. So during <coughs> the introduction, which, um, <coughs> sorry, let me get some water. Drink some water. Yeah, correct. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> When so, you, am I allowed to say this? Stop me immediately if I'm not. When okay. you played Olivia de Havilland. I did play Olivia de Havilland. When you did play her. I can't say in what. <laughs> no, 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 we're not I, saying I, what. I'm going to go around it now. When you played Olivia de Havilland, <laughs> did you study Olivia or did you give your interpretation of Olivia? Um, I studied her intensely. Because the performance was excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, she was Betty Davis' <laughs> friend, and I knew Betty Davis well. Betty Davis never said a harsh word about Olivia de Havilland. She Who loved. Her. She, she was called a wonderful. Her. Was her was, you know what? I'm going to just turn off my my picture for a minute. I can still talk because I'm going to take. I have allergies, and the heat's making them heat up. So I'm just going to take a little cough medicine. Truly, it is cough medicine. Right. And um, you're mysterious with the lady right. in the dark. Oh and nobody Lord. knows what Lee Purcell Woo! looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't want anybody to see me swigging cough medicine. It's really that's funny. Funny. Yo, that's all fine. How hot is it? Are you in LA? How hot is it? Uh, right now, I don't know the temperature right now. It's probably 90s, but it's a, it's a weird, it's a very strange heat. Yeah, we we're are, in Palm Springs. We have so humidity. It was we 117 yesterday. 117. Oh, oh we, where are you? Wait, Palm, Palm Springs. Springs. Oh, you're in Palm. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you're crazy. Why do you think we're moving to East? <laughs> I'll tell you. I know my my nephew and his partner. They they have a place in Palm Springs, and you just can't go there at certain times unless you're willing to. Oh. You know, pay a million dollars a month for air conditioning and yes, we have solar, no, so we're, we're lucky. Solar, so we have <laughs> they're pay. they're young. They don't they don't I, have solar yet. I'm but, originally I'm originally from New York, Brooklyn, and now I'm homesick and I'm 83, and it's time to go home. So yeah, we're buying a place in East Hampton, which is about two minutes from the ocean. Oh, nice! So cool ocean breezes. Oh, oh, can I come? Oh my you know, God. Yes, you last come week visit. I talked about the sand going up my nose. Very fine. That's why my voice is gravel. You know, oh. in Vegas, they say uh, uh, sand voice. Joan Rivers, who I knew, used to complain about that. She'd say, <clears throat> I don't I don't breathe. I get out of the limo. I run into the casino because if that dust gets in my nose, she said, I'm gravelly and coughing all night. I totally it's, understand. It's That's what I'm with. You know, it's great having the flowers and the plants, but boy, I do. I have allergies and they kick in and it's it's not, not fun. It's really not fun. But Olivia, just to reiterate on that, right? she, um, I was very fortunate because she had approval of who would play her in this project we can't name. Right. But you know who it is. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and she um, approved me. And uh, and it was, and that was I'm interrupting you for a reason. Did you ever meet Betty Davis? No. Did you ever meet Joan Crawford? No. Oh, isn't that interesting? No, uh, <laughs> really, a little bit earlier. But, I can't say why it's oh. interesting. <laughs> okay. Betty Davis, Joan Crawford. Oh, where have you been? I uh, know, I got it. Okay. <laughs> so wait, let me go back. Let me go back two seconds, you guys. With the I, I wish I had. They were both incredible. With the Hollywood Radio Players, you guys, you can go to HollywoodRadioPlayers.com. You can also go on YouTube um, and, and find it. And, and the first two you want to watch are the ones that uh, that Lee actually produced, uh, War of the Worlds and uh, what was the other one? Well, I have to ask her a question. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. What was the other? Actually, I, I produced them all. With oh, you my, with oh, my, okay. with Did my, you do some of and um, but I think you were thinking of directing. I directed a few of them. We take turns directing. And I directed oh, the, the Worlds and the Bickersons and 
I think father father knows best. I directed, yeah, I directed father. I do and watch. It's very cool. Well, I'm in a bunch of them. I, I'm in a bunch of them. You know, sometimes I have a little tiny one liner, sometimes, you know, a big role because we alternate. Right. That's Wait, fine. Is it like a table reading when we see it? No. Oh, God, no. How do you do it? Uh, we rehearse. We have a lot of rehearsal. If we're seeing it, it's if we're seeing a radio show. How are we doing it? On Zoom. No, you no, see no, it. I don't, you see it. You no, see I mean, what am I? When I open up the TV, what do I see? You see, uh, it's You're it's a show. It's radio. You can see um, instead of just here, and it's on Zoom, and you see the full show. But wait. With, do you, have, you see the people are reading you, it. Are you in costume? Do you have we're sets? In we're in costumes. No, you can't have a set but uh, on Zoom, but we have um, props. We have sound effects. We have uh, a lot of special effects. There's a lot of, you know, if, if it's snowing, you see snow. I right. mean, that sort of thing. And everybody's in costume. We have a fabulous costumer who's just joined us at our, at our at, on the Bickersons season two. And uh, Sean LeBlanc, who is a, a very major costumer, and he he's now doing all of our costumes. We did our costumes for the first season, and we did okay, but it's nothing like having, you know, a real so, guy. So what it is is it's theater on radio. You could say that. You could you could definitely say that for sure. I would say that because that's exactly what it sounds like. It's like going to Broadway and seeing it on radio rather than on television. Yeah, except for it's in Zoom, so we're in all the little boxes. Right. But, but when you watch it, you forget about that. Right. You, just, you forget. And even I forget when I'm seeing it. I just, I just, I just see and hear the story. Mm -hmm. And I see and hear the actors, and the actors are, are great, really, really good. And everybody is very versatile. We're doing, we're doing it right now. We're a radio TV show. And we're, this is what we just don't have special we're effects. doing it right now. Now, <laughs> exactly right. now, if I went and got dressed up and looked exactly like Rock Hudson's twin brother, then the, <laughs> then the, or, or Tony Curtis, then the show would really be a hit. No, I but, like um, oh, so, no, that's something to keep in mind. <laughs> What's that? Oh. <laughs> but you could do that. You could dress up like Rock Hudson. Yeah, Rock, Rock Hudson. Hudson and play Rock, Rock Hudson. Uh, I knew Roy Rock, Rock Hudson. And he was the, the, the little that I knew about him was he was shy and very, very not enjoying the, the everybody is so gorgeous. He didn't quite understand that from what I got that I knew his, his lover better. Oh. Actually, I knew George Nader very well, who was rock. George Nader and I dated when I was young. So I knew him with, because of Rock Hudson. And Rock was very, very uh, shy. And not the, not the, not, I mean, he was gorgeous in person. Oh. I dropped dead when I, no, when I saw him, I dropped dead. Six foot four, a voice. Oh. I mean, he was breathtaking. And, he was breathtaking. And just such a regular guy. Like, he was just, like nobody. Like, if you told him your hands and you go, ah, and he'd walk away. So, so you did a very cool, um, <clears throat> kind of like a, uh, a kids themed horror film a little bit. And the reason I want to bring it up is because everybody yes. that's in it almost has been on the show, um, and they're oh. fun. So we've had Malcolm McDowell on the show. We have not had Keith David. We've had Lance Hendrickson on the show. Elaine Hendricks has been on the show. Armand Asante has not been on the show, and Christopher Atkins has not been on the show. But now you're on the show. Adrian Paul's been on the show. Michael Bailey Smith's been on the show, and Eileen Dietz has been on the show. And it was wow. a very good movie. How was it working? Because that's a, a, a relatively uh, cool like special in horror, because I like horror movies. That's a, a, a very horror, you know, movie horror. kind of a horror. Yeah. How do you say horror? Horror. 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 Okay. He, he says horror. <laughs> one time we had a show and he was Wait a minute. Seriously. One time we had a show and the actress came on and he said, oh, she's a star whore. And I said, Jimmy, you can't do that. <laughs> it's horror. It's horror. Well, I don't know. I, that's what I'm horror. So she, <laughs> said, I'm not, she said, I'm not a whore. So, no, he didn't say that, honey. He's from Florida. They don't speak English down in Florida. No, but it's, it was a cool movie, and it was a a, a, a very like well known cast of people, and half of those people are very well known in horror. Horror, horror. horror. Ha, ha. Like, do you like horror? Do you, first of all, do you like horror movies at all? No. Okay. Me neither. I, I like. I let me take that back. This was not 
that film that we can't name was not a um, a gory. No, it was for kids horror. Film. Yeah, it was like for kids, right? Well, it wasn't for kids, but it was, but it was kind of a goofy. It was a feel good, feel good. And um, I love. I don't. Love it. I, don't like, I don't like what I call slice and dice films. Right. I don't. I don't like blood and gore. I don't like mm, any of that. But I do like thrillers, and I and I did like that film, and um, and I I thought it was it was funny. It was it was it was like a spoof, and um, and silly. And I liked my role. I played you know the uh, richest woman in the world who was the only politician left living because she had had everybody else killed off. I love so, it. I actually own the DVD. <laughs> what? I actually own it. So, oh, he's, Lynn, he's so got a collection. So I own. collect horror movies of, of DVDs that we could fill a house. But I collect mm -hmm. uh, action figures and you have to move all that. And uh, yes, yeah, so right I have, now it's all in storage. I put it all in storage because we, you know why? Mm -hmm. I said hey, we can't sell our house if people go in and see your office. It looks like a horror hotel. They're going to say this. These people are witches. They're, they're spooks. <laughs> They're crazy. I, I, he's got every time. Wow. No, he's got seven foot things that come alive when you walk by. Ooh. <laughs> Somebody goes in that room to buy the house and the goddamn thing goes, ooh. I still have a house for Halloween. Do, yes. do, you do, do you do Halloween parties for kids or, or at Halloween time? You know, I, I do it all for myself. Oh, no, I, well, we used to, but now I just collect all those things for myself. And everything. everything Malcolm is McDowell story. and Lance Henriksen are two of my favorite actors. And uh, I did, tell them what you did with um, Malcolm um, I used to go. Uh, oh, so, okay. So this, this had the nerve to say this to Malcolm McDowell. This so I used to be a, a celebrity clothing designer, and I would go to conventions. Um, and I would take clothes, tons of clothes, um, and then I would give it to them if they would, you know, let me take pictures with them in it. And they all loved it. And then that's how I built the show originally. That's how I got, like, Malcolm McDowell was on the show in our first, like, couple of weeks, you know, that I started. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish you still did that. I, I could use some clothes. <laughs> but then same thing with Lance Henriksen. So the yeah, first time I met Malcolm McDowell, um, I was single then. I wasn't with Ron. And I... Uh, I, had, I always had, I bought a VIP ticket, so I walked up to him and I uh, whispered in his ear, um, I know you're straight, but if you were gay, I would rock your world. <laughs> and he literally laughed and gave me a hug, and he took my phone number, and I became good friends with Chris Rowe. Oh. And, uh, he uh, took me to dinner, and, I, and we went to breakfast, and I went to breakfast make, with make, Lance Henriksen. Make, yeah, make it that he's straight. You know, I know he's straight. straight. I didn't say but I went to dinner. But I went to, then he invited me to breakfast, and I got to go to breakfast with Malcolm McDowell, Lance Henriksen, and Doug Bradley, who plays uh, Pinhead, because that's not the name of the movie. He plays Pinhead, and it was like one of the greatest things that ever like happened to me. Oh, my so gosh. Lance and Malcolm together is really chaos. And they gave me all these great collectibles, you know, that you can't get. Like Lance makes these tiles from a certain movie that he was in, and, and he doesn't sell them; he just makes them. And he gave me one, and Malcolm gave me like a uh, another movie, a head bust from another movie that he was in. I wanted to put out a point: a real man, a true heterosexual straight butch man, is not afraid of a gay man. He will hug him. <laughs> oh, he, he was. Look, listen, I'm good friends with Larry. Uh, not Larry. I can't. Uh, Larry privately. Uh, Lorenzo Lamas. Okay. Lorenzo Lamas hugs me. He'll give me a kiss on the cheek. He's the straightest man. I mean, he'll bang a chick in a minute. He's crazy, you know. He, he's, he is married now, you know. So. Yeah, he likes back those, then. You know, he likes back those old dancer women. His what, mother, Arlene, was a very good friend of mine, Arlene Dahl. Oh, and of course. Oh, my gosh. She was so gorgeous. No, breathtaking. I really person. Thank Milk you. white skin, fire red hair, and emerald green eyes. He was really spoken, intelligent, a very good friend of mine, very dear friend for years. And I, my daughter Leslie was single, and Larry was single. And I said, Arlene, why don't we fix Larry up with my daughter? And she said, Ron, I wouldn't wish it on Leslie. She said, you know the types of girls he goes out with. She said, they all dance on poles. Oh. <laughs> So another one who did that too, Ron went dancing with um, Stephen Lang, who's from yeah. a very popular franchise. Um, very popular. I you know, love Stephen. And he just started, they started dancing in front of like hundreds of people. Slow dancing, cheek to cheek. I was hilarious. Oh my gosh. 
Um, yeah, and these, these guys are straight, so right? straight that they're not afraid of their sexuality. He's straight, right? I, I oh, yeah, he's straight. I, I know yeah. one actor in particular who's terrified of gay or anything like it. He runs away from it. He's nuts. Because he's probably gay. Yeah, yeah, probably. Because he's afraid he's going to be found out. But one thing about Rock Hudson I have to say is, I was on McMillan and Wife. I played a. Um, a you can't. Oh, you did a show. Oh, oh did you I say a show? show? No, Millie, Millie, my so Millie, 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 my life. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, and it's really hard. I know it's a hard to Absolutely. talk about all these things, but, but it is really important. Not I was. Yes. Never, I was never on that show. But if I were on that show, I might have heard the script girl being told by Rock. The line is not right. I want it redone. And when I listened to the line, I thought, uh-huh. It was a little bit of a feminine line. It was not Rock Hudson tough. Okay, and so he did not want to say that because... He was very protective of his image, and he knew how to be a straight man always. And always. That I could... no. So in another movie that we're not allowed to mention, and I don't know who this person is, I actually went to Ron and said, do you know who this person is? He says, absolutely. And I said, you played her. You played Billy Dove. Who is Billy Dove? Tell well, us. Billy Dove was uh, Ziegfeld's wife, Flo Ziegfeld's wife. Actually, Billy Dove, uh, maybe she was, I don't know, but she was she was a big, big, big silent film star. She oh, yeah, actually, she uh, when she retired, she actually retired to Palm Springs, where you guys live, right. and, and was there for many, many years. But her story, which the part of the story that that project covers, um, she, how can I say this without saying it? Let me think. Okay. So she, um, she was a very beautiful, I mean, she would look her up. She's gorgeous. Tiny, tiny little beautiful woman. Yeah, gorgeous. And of course, I am tall. Again, she played in The Wizard of Oz. She did not actually. She was a silent film star, very big in silent films. And she was a, she became under contract to Howard Hughes. I can say his name. She was under contract to Howard Hughes. She was married, and Howard Hughes just fell for her. And so he offered her husband. It was completely incorrigible. A hundred thousand dollars, which back then was, God knows, a lot of money, a lot of money, like millions, right? Okay. Offered her husband a hundred thousand dollars if he could, if he would divorce Billy, so that Howard could marry her. And the husband, being the cad that he was, took the money, and divorced Billy. <clears throat> oh, wow. And then Howard changed his mind. And decided not to marry Billy, but he but he put her under contract, and so she always had a good income that from nice. that. So she wasn't left, you know, penniless. And and um, and she was. You can look her up. Uh, look her up because she was really really beautiful, and and it was great playing her. And and the person I worked opposite in that project was Tommy Lee Jones. And that was really fun because I really, I really love Tommy Lee, and um, and that's all I can say. Yes, I, I was best friends for years. Who I took her name was Jane Russell. Jane Russell and I were like brother and sister. We oh. hung out all over. We were, I I adore her still, and mourn her always. And in spite of what people say, she was not cranky and nasty. She just didn't like certain people. <laughs> No, really, she was like like me, tough girl. She would tell you. People would say, oh, darling, let's do lunch, and she'd turn and do this. <laughs> oh, she hated that Beverly Hills bullshit. Maybe oh, she just didn't like, maybe she didn't suffer fools. No, she yes. didn't like people that were, um, that would condescend her or bullshit her. Jane was a tough broad. Anyway, she told me that Howard Hughes was after Ava Gardner like you can't believe. Oh, so there's another said, this woman. Said, Jane, well, did he get you where with Ava Gardner? She said, no, Ron, Ava Gardner was nuts. She was crazy. Really? And I said, really crazy? She said, yes, she was nuts. She used to beat him up. She used to hit him with things. She used to curse him out. I oh mean, he loved it. He loved it. He, oh, did. he was pursuing her until Sinatra, finally, when they got together, put a stop to it with you. And then he 
Rest I was going to sit and marry my buddy, who still is my buddy, Terry Moore. I know Terry, yes. I love Terry. Terry is my darling friend. And it's true, Howard Hughes did marry Terry Moore on a boat, but there was no proof of that marriage. But she got the money. Yeah. And a lot of zeros. <laughs> So wait, I, I met through Jane Russell. Listen to the start. My lovely Jane introduced me to Terry Moore, Esther Williams, Arlene Dahl. Uh, I, I knew Shelley Winters on my own. Uh, a cast of stars you can't believe. Mr. Blackwell? No. no, I met Mr. Blackwell on my own. But I mean, uh, Jane just knew everybody in the business and all the ladies liked me. They all thought I was cute, a cute guy or something. I don't know. So wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, so I'm gonna brag a little bit more, and it's gonna lead me into my next little segment. Um, okay. So some of the other people you guys that Lee has worked with, uh, Jan Michael Vincent, William Cat, he's been on the show. Gary Busey, oh, Patty don't know Gary Busey? I know him. Yeah, Sam Melville, Robert England, Charlene Tilton. We just met her at the Academy Awards. I think we can Academy say Awards. Yeah, I, I, I had a party, not not at the Academy Awards. But oh, I had a party. Uh, then uh, James Kahn, Stephen Bauer, Terry Polo. I love Terry Polo. Melanie I know Griffin. Stephen Bauer. Yeah, I know you do. Hang I on. love Stephen Bauer. I love him. Richard Good Farnsworth, working, Michael Perret. You know Michael oh, Perret. Gene Wilder, Richard Pryor, Joe Beth Williams, Craig T. Nelson, Nicholas Coster, uh, Bo Bridges, Lloyd Bridges, and we said Ed Lauder, Patrick Darbo. We know her. Ed Lauder has always been like the guy who, like, I was always afraid of growing up because he always played the mean guy. He was like, the sure he was mean, but he's fabulous. Bill Bixby, Luke Ferrigno, Charles Napier. Uh, the reason I bring this up, then, I usually have two two questions I like to ask all the actors okay. and actresses. I can only ask one of them. One of them is, what movie would you like to have been in? Which you can't answer. Okay, nice. But. Uh, but what you can answer is so bucket list. You've already worked with some of the biggest people on the she planet. Can't that she can too. You can't answer the what movie would you want? I'm not, to no, I can't that. No, no, no. no bucket list: male and female actor. If you could live, if you could have worked with anybody in your career, and they can be living or dead, who would somebody who you would have loved to have worked with, both a male and a female <laughs> that you haven't worked with because you already worked with everybody? That's Go a huge. Watch. I have worked with. A whole lot of people. Well, that's a really huge question. Um, boy, who would I? Well, hmm. Okay, the first person that comes to mind is Laurence Olivier. Oh yeah, that's a good one. And I, I kind of go back to the golden age because I like that time period. Um, Clark Gable. Um, Clark Gable, he's cute. Yeah, I tell you who I like. He was a hard guy to get along with. I, I wouldn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> he really was very, very not able. What do I care? You know, um, I tell you who I like right now that I just, I just think this guy is, and I can't mention the project, but <clears throat> you can look him up. Oh, Timothy he's Chalamet. Oh, um, he's awesome. Timothy Chalamet. He's, he's very young. He's utterly brilliant. I mean, I think this guy can do anything. I don't know how old he is, 20 something or 30 something. He's very young. But he, he's a master. He's just a master. He's this generation's Johnny Depp in a lot of ways. I think um, he's I think he's this generation's I don't know everything because there's I don't see anything he can't do. Yeah, and he's, he's a skinny, skinny little guy that you'd never think could do power. And the guy can do power like very few people can do today. I mean, true power emanating oh, I, from. I he's, he's he's amazing. And then women, I would have liked to have worked with Olivia. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I did kind of secondhand, you know, playing her, and and then I got a lovely letter from her afterwards. You know, she liked my performance as oh, well. Great. It was really nice. I still have it and. I would have loved to have worked with Olivia because I, I consider her to be one of the truly great actresses, you know, of all time. And um, that's about, I, I don't know. It's such a huge yeah, question. I, 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 27, the chat room. I, 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 oh my gosh. To I, think what else will be coming from him. So I give, us, give us a current it. female. Is there like a current female that's living now that you like a lot? No. <laughs> I have an Olivia okay. Havlin story. Uh, you, oh, you know what? I actually there is somebody. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Ron. 
for the large part. The, the, okay. It's a show. It's good. The young girl who plays Wednesday. Oh, the, yes. On the newest iteration of that show. That Jennifer show. Vega. Um, yeah, Jennifer. What's her name again? Jenna Jenny, Ortega. Uh, Jenny. Jenna Ortega. Oh, Jenna Ortega. Oh, my gosh. That I girl. Call, I have her action figure. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. That's amazing. I didn't even know she had an action figure. No, she is so good. And she, I, I think she's going to to prove to be uh, extremely versatile and one of the greats. My gosh, that girl. More of a horror she like what? what is she, like 19? or Young, yeah. She's super young. But that, I love that to play her mother, her aunt, her grandmother, whatever. You know, it would just be really exciting to work. She's got big things coming out. Okay, going too. back to the back years, the golden years of Hollywood, um, I spoke with Betty one time, and I never really wanted to push her with uh, private questions, because Betty didn't like, Betty Davis I'm talking about. Nice she course. didn't like that. She, did, Betty Davis, one, Betty. she was very private. Betty Davis was uh, had a great sense of humor, and she liked you if you made her laugh. But I did say to her, why is it that everybody in Hollywood, and I know you dislike Joan Crawford, of which she had no reaction to, do you love... Olivia de Havilland. She said, oh, Livy? She said, Livy was like my kid's sister. She mm -hmm. said, I hated Errol Flynn. And when Olivia was madly in love with him after making Robin Hood, she, <laughs> said, she said, I took her under my wing and I educated her. <laughs> so knowing what Betty Davis's education was, boy, oh, boy. Oh, that would be interesting, Doug. Olivia yeah. Wilson, you know, or whatever. And... Uh, I guess not stop going out with Errol Flynn. Uh, I never met Errol, but I know people who knew him well. And they said, boy, oh boy, he was one wild guy. Wild as they come. A true ladies man. He, I mean. No, men too. Men and with lady, with yeah. ladies. Man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Who, who, who's the biggest star you ever worked with? Oh my gosh, I've worked with so many. Well, the biggest. Mine was Sophia Loren. I don't know, Kirk Douglas. Um, now, Kirk, what are you talking about? You got the king, one of the best in Hollywood. Kirk Douglas? Michael yeah. Douglas. Um, Michael, something like Orson, a Orson Welles. No, I love Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas. What about, though, okay, so I read, I don't know if I, I think I Googled it. I read that somehow, like, you were mentored by Steve McQueen, who I think Steve McQueen's hot, super hot. I, I was. I was. I was. He, uh, he uh, chose me to be in a film. And um, and then he mentored me because I was my first film. It was actually I'd only done at that point a commercial, a few commercials, and I and then I had been signed to do uh, a series, but I had an out clause because I was in the process of doing the audition process. There were five auditions for the film that Steve produced that I eventually got, and so I had done one line on the series. And then because I had an out clause, um, and when I got the film, I could I could leave. And they, and they were great. They wished me well, and, and nobody was mad at me, and that was great. And so Steve then took me under his wing because I knew nothing. I mean, I was nobody, you know, from nowhere. You know, first film, and Steve McQueen. <laughs> I know. And, yeah. And he, our, he our, first was, film is, our first film is like. Uh, the clown kills you 8,000 times. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I mean, to work with Steve McQueen on your first film is just freaking awesome. Well, it was, yeah. And my second film was with Orson Welles. So I always say after that, it's like, pff, nobody intimidates me. That's and awesome. That's, you're making, that's baptism. You're making fun of these horror movies that I'm in. No, not you. I'm well, me too. I was well, in a long let time. Let me tell you something about these cheesy horror films. When we shot that kind of woman with Tara Puncher, <laughs> uh, of course I'm old. I'm 82 <laughs> years old when I forget. When you shot a movie with Tab Hunter and Sophia Loren, I didn't have any fun, even though I met Sophia on the set. No fun. You didn't have any fun? No, because it was, it was you know, Lomet was directing. It was a very, very, uh, we were shooting in a railroad station. It was difficult. And I, and I didn't enjoy the, the whole process. I liked meeting her. And of course, Tab Hunter became my friend all his life until he passed away. He was right. my very dear friend. So that came out of it. 
these horror films, I have fun on, on the set. You know, it's not so intense like the the the, the, no, no uh, movies. the big movies. Right. You know, what movie have you ever worked on that was you not fun? <laughs> no, I don't mean the title. No, I was oh, this, this is such a difficult interview. Um, how can I say it? Uh, Without have, saying. You, have, have you ever found a set difficult where you couldn't wait for the film to be finished because you were uncomfortable working in that <clears throat> Well, not, and I will never name names, but um, but not the set of a film. I mean, I've had some really difficult sets, you know, physically difficult, strenuous, being thrown into water and jumping out of cars and things like that. And then, of course, 14, 15 hour days and, <laughs> you know, all of that, right? Um, I have worked with um, actors who I will never name, who I... I just, I couldn't wait to not work with those actors. And there's only really two or three, uh, but I couldn't wait to be done working with those actors because they were so difficult. And usually when you get, because most people that I've worked with have been incredibly professional, um, courteous, friendly, be became, we became friends, you know, still are. Awesome. Um, so, so usually when you have that kind of situation, there's either, Drugs or alcohol or insanity involved. Insanity more like, <laughs> no, more like insanity. I or all of the above, you know. Yeah, but, all, yeah. well, I, will, I will tell you, I've been in the company of people, actors who think they are beyond God. Oh my gosh. They are supreme. Do not look at me. Do not speak to me. I'm in my private dressing room. I shall not be annoyed with my co-stars. And if it wasn't for me, this film would never happen. So kiss my ass every morning. You know, and those people you want to just knock on their ass. You want to get one punch in the face. We have that even <clears throat> here on the show. Like you're extremely Ugh. accomplished. You have no, you're wait, 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 let me show She's you. A professional. Let me finish my statement. You uh, you have a you know a two time prime time citizens right here. We yes, we're married. Uh, so I know. And, and so are the big citizens. Uh, so hold on. Story. So my point being, we've had people on the show who might have had like like I was saying, you're super accomplished. You've accomplished so many things. We have people who come on and they win a reality show and they're famous for 15 minutes and and you would not believe like the attitudes that they have and oh, I would and everything oh, I would. yeah and it's just amazing to me because we can have someone you know like you on or Stephen Lang or somebody who's you know really done just such wonderful things and the nicest people ever professional and, and she so professional the yes she the and these other people are just oh, terrible sure, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I know. Yeah, that, 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 he ended the interview after like 10 minutes because he was just like, yeah, I can't even do this. Like, I you I go. <laughs> she was an impossible human being. If I had to be with this woman in a room for an hour, I would have choked myself. Or, myself. <laughs> or choked her. Yeah, so oh, no, no, we want to get in trouble I've for never, that. I've never <laughs> met a person that wasn't human. It was an ego. Ooh. Oh, I have never met the most nasty, obnoxious, even And it's usually the smaller people for us that, that come listen, on the show. Listen, Jane Russell would say all the time, I got this approval. Who'd you work with? What, you, what her movies and whatever. She loved and adored, um, my God. Anyway, Vincent Price was one of the best. Oh, oh I've heard he was, was a, just a wonderful gentleman. And he's Robert Mitchell was Jane Russell's dearest and best friend. Oh, like, yeah. Like I was to her, after he died, I placed his place. And she said to me, working with Mitch was great. Working with Vincent Price was great. She said, but there are some that you just cannot work with. She said, because they are difficult, they're late on the set. If yes. you tell them they're late on the set, they want to walk off the set or walk off the picture. You, they're time, they're time bombs, she said. You never know what to say or do. And also, she said, one person she worked with, I won't give her name, a woman. Don't. Who I happen to have liked as an actress, but Jane Russell said was totally impossible because she was banging everybody on the set. All the takes a lot of time. <laughs> no, no, not all of it. No, but she was banging some of the biggies, and she got away with murder because of that. And one scene in the movie where Jane Russell 
had a very low cut dress, which showed some cleavage. She went and had a fight with the clothing the designer and said, why am I always up here when Jane Russell's down there? They said, well, Jane Russell's known for her cleavage. That's her that, I mean, the bra. Remember 36, the bra. 36B, you know, that's all she was, was 36B. Or a, you know, Howard Hughes, remember, he designed that bra. Yes. She never wore. That she, but there were pictures taken. And so she became very famous for her yeah, odd that, shaped but line. When, she yeah. the, when she did the outlook, she, oops. What's the matter with you? I'm old. I, don't know. <laughs> you know what? I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. He, he, he anyway, didn't. she moved. Forward. You'll watch it anyway. She hated the movie. It was a terrible film. Hours and hours of scenes. He shot the tombstone 160. So hang on, we got it because we're going to, we got to. Anyway, um, this actress went and had them cut her so low that she was in competition with Jane. It was a big, oh, big competition. So Jane, Jane never said anything. So you guys, listen up. First of all, um, follow Lee on her Instagram. It's at the Lee Purcell. Um, Lee is L-E-E. -E. You can follow her uh, website is LeePurcell.com. Please check out Hollywood Radio Players. Um, the website is HollywoodRadioPlayers.com. If you go to HollywoodRadioPlayers.com, does it take you to the YouTube thing to see them all or no? What? A drop-down menu comes down of all the shows. You you click on the show you want to see, and that takes you directly to that show on YouTube. Perfect. Also, I want to mention Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more active on Facebook than I am on Instagram. I should be better with Instagram, but I don't have a lot of time. But uh, so Facebook, uh, the Facebook uh, Lee Purcell fan page. That's okay. I interact okay. with my right. fans right. and so forth. Even though we couldn't talk, like we would, you did a great job. I well, screwed up. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I keep forgetting. I'm so used to, I've been interviewing for so many years. I, I, I can't not interview the way I like to interview. It's but very you, difficult. It's it's really hard. I've been, but I've been, you guys, I've you, been did great. You, did, you did great. You have been in some really good movies that Thank I've been for. And I've seen your work, and I like your work. I've never, I've never critiqued you as some I do. You know, I see some films and some things that I just think the actor didn't do it. Do you know how do you do the same thing? I mean, I watch, I look at the, the photo, photography, I listen to sound, color, lighting. I do everything when I watch a movie. Me I'm too. You too. So if the actor's just missing it, I get upset. But yeah. I've seen you in, in several things, and you, you, you just passed the bill. You're good. Uh, no, I'm, not, I'm not lying. I don't blow smoke up You anymore. made my day. You did. So we want to no, also really. thank Harlan Ball for setting this yes. thing up. Harlan, Harlan. Harlan. Congratulations Harlan. on your career. And when the strike is over, if you've got anything you want to promote that we can mention the title of, let us know, and we'll bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> Harlan. I would love to come back. In the meantime, keep watching Hollywood Radio Players because we do put up new shows. And uh, and there'll be another one up in maybe six weeks. And, and but there's ten up right now, so you can. There's a wide variety, so I hope everybody enjoys it. And if you can donate, great to to Motion Picture and Television Fund. And if you can't, that's okay. Enjoy the show. Right. Absolutely. Thank and, you so and, much. Wait, and earlier I said Harlan used to be gorgeous. Harlan, you're still gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> Harlan is gorgeous. He's gorgeous. And any time you want me to cheat, give me a call. You never know. Yeah, oh, you know, I, I will mention that to him. I'm going out. <laughs> <laughs> no, thinks, I will tell him about your very generous offer. He thinks and he's crazy. He thinks I'm crazy to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> when I meet him at the like at red carpets and stuff, we talk for a minute, and then he goes like this, and he runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, thank you so much. It's been thank such you a pleasure. Guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Color. Keep it. All right. Yeah, I mean, you, well, I had it all my life, but. Uh, I, I hope one day to maybe work with you. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, I would love that so much. I think, I think we would get a long film. I would just I have, nine films. Fun on the set I have nine films on hold right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I have six waiting. I'm good. Well, you're lucky, guys. You're lucky. No, I've, been waiting, be I've been waiting four years for my six. <laughs> of course, we had COVID. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm so sick of the line. There's one movie called Death House. No, no, no. See, Oh shit! Right. Go anyway, because we have another oh, class. we have another guest. Anyway. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. Yes, thank you guys for having me on. Thank you to everybody watching and listening for watching and listening. Absolutely. And, uh, I'll see you another time. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, everybody, that was Lee Purcell. She's fabulous. Two-time prime time, is, two -time, it is time really difficult 
to do the the show now without mentioning uh, titles of movies. And so we're going to take a quick music break, you guys. We're going to play Stefano. Why I'm here. Uh, Stefano's wife just had a baby, and she's they're very cool. We like them a lot. And then when we come back, we'll be with our next guest, Charlie Z, also known as Drumageddon. Enjoy, everybody. Here's Stefano. Why I'm here. Reflection in the mirror Try to be strong, but nothing's clear It's been a long day, yes, yeah, it's been a long year Ma keeps calling, saying, listen here Kick them doors open, your kingdom will come Don't lose hope, son, stay full of love So I drown my fears and I swam to change Now watch me run through the pouring rain This is why I'm here This is what I'm here for Stop doing things I don't want to do Guess it's cool, cause it brought me to you on this windy road Yeah, friends come and go, but I got you here now and you're all I know You wake me up, you hold me down, you never leave you on my crown There's no question, it's crystal clear Again, Stefano, why I'm here. Uh, love Stefano. We actually met him at an event here in California, and we became pretty good friends, so it's really cool. And now we're going to bring our next guest on. Oh, Let's make sure we up. can hear him. Let's make sure we can hear him. Check, check. Can you hear me? Hey, what's up? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Oh, and our it's not red. It's not oh, yeah. Red. <laughs> what's up, guys? All right, so let me do an official... Uh, uh, introduction. All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, cyborg drummer and DJ drum again. And hello and welcome to the show. Yay! What's up, boys? How you guys doing? Good. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Ron actually remembers that that you were uh, like the headliner at the Soho Johnny Nine One One Benefit event. Um, Why do you make me out to be fucking senile? <laughs> 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 so, so we've seen you guys. We've actually met Drum again. He's a friend, uh, a friend of the show. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal drummer. You can't even like believe how great he is. And his hair sometimes is red because he's going to. We're going to talk about it in a little while. So, how did we decide to go back to black? 
oh, this is the Clark Kent. You know, you got the Superman when I'm actually doing the live shows. We've got Clark Kent to keep it a little okay. But I got the, you know, the red jacket, so we're good to go now. You know what I mean? Yeah, there we go. So we have a chat room with a bunch so of people in this. When did you decide to have a hair comb that looks like an erection? Well, when I saw you, because you're so hot, man. I mean, I got to tell you. <laughs> 9-11, that was, that's the exact date, so you know. <laughs> that was hilarious. Real quick, I'm eating peanuts. I'm <laughs> well, I'm glad it's just peanuts. <laughs> I didn't have any lunch. He didn't have any lunch, so, so hold on. Really get my boss over here. So hang on, we have a chat room. Say hi to everybody in the chat room, because the chat room is actually on Facebook now, because uh, YouTube was having a problem, so everybody's watching on Facebook. Awesome. So say, hi to, say hi to the chat room, and... Uh, uh, and let's get get going. So first of all, you you're are you are you from New York? I know you live in the yeah. village, I think, right? You're, are you a nat native New Yorkian? No, I'm I'm from Jersey originally, but um, I live in uh, West Village, basically Christopher and Bleecker. So literally, that cover that I did of uh, Abbey Road in New York City, that's the street. That's my street that I'm crossing over Seventh Ave with the whole thing, and you could actually see like that is Christopher Street. And that's the uh, World Trade Center, and that's 7th Ave right there. That's where I live. <laughs> New Jersey and New York people almost sound alike. New Jersey people want to sound like New Yorkers. They just miss it. <laughs> All right, that's hilarious. So you live in the West Village. So I want to know, because you've done so many cool things. The first thing I want to know is, how did you how did you wake up and say one day, gee, I'm going to be like a freaking cyborg drummer? Uh, you know, like how long have you been drumming? I've been drumming since I was seven, but the thing was I was playing with everyone else. I was doing, you know, gigs with uh, different pop artists, jazz artists, hip hop people, metal, progressive music, fusion, hip hop, whatever. Um, and then I became a producer, music director for a while. And I started touring with this guy named Out of Sight on Warner Brothers. And that gig, the music director called me and he goes, hey, man, you know, this guy's got a hit on the radio. It's on Z100. Uh, he needs a band. It's like, all right, cool. So can you jump in and be my cyborg drummer? And I'm like, yeah, man, sure. What the hell's that? And he goes, yeah, I need you to run tracks. I need you to DJ. I need you to sing back up and hype the crowd. I need you to play the drums and do all this while leading the band. And everything else, whatever they can get you for. They'll make you do 100 things for the money. You know what, man? I'll make you an omelet too at this point. You know, just, yes. just make sure the check clears. I'm good to go. But I wound up doing that, and uh, that was for a couple of years. And then I noticed that it's like a lot of people were seeing me juggle all those balls back there. And I'm like, all right, well, let me cut out the middle, man. Let me call some of my, you know, singers from The Voice and American Idol, like Ale and uh, Jerome Bell and Manny Cabo, who you guys just had on, and just stick them on my own tracks. And now, you know, during the shutdown. Everything blew up, and and here we are, yeah. man. Two point yeah, uh, twenty one million plays and views now. So we had crazy. Jerome Bell. We had Jerome Bell on the show before, and Mandy, we just had last week, and now we've got you this week. So let me brag a little for you. Yeah, please. Here are some of the places you guys. Um, so so first of all, tell us how did we come up with the name then Drum Again? <laughs> That's a good one. So I did this drum solo on YouTube in early YouTube. This had to be like. 2010, 2011, where I drummed up uh, an entire Brooklyn building in one take. So I just put drums through the whole thing. It took me like a half a day to set up, did a one take drum solo, you know, went mini viral for the time. And uh, I named it Drumageddon. And then I realized, why don't I just call myself Drumageddon, take out some of the, uh, the right. you know, letters and everything and truncate it to make it look better on posters. And I'm Drumageddon now. And it's a, it's a fun, cool it. name. <laughs> The one and only. That's right. Yes. I know. I think it's freaking fabulous. So you guys, he's played the Winter Olympics, the Lollapalooza, uh, Lollapalooza Warp Tour, the Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall, MetLife Stadium, Bamboozle Fest. And he was on MTV's TRL, AOL Sessions, the Today Show, Royal Albert Hall. He's toured 31 countries, 43 states. He's heard on 250 plus records. He's had a Times Square billboard. He's in the Sick Drummer that, – that's a hilarious title – Sick Drummer Hall of Fame. Yeah. And he's uh, on the Blender Magazine's Best Drummers of All Time list, which, you know, I, I've always been a fan of drummers. And um, I used to be really good friends with Bobby Blotzer. Oh, uh, yeah. Rat. Bobby, man. Rat. Come on. Round and round. We've had um, a ton. Now I can't think of who they are. But over the years, mostly before Ron came on the show, we've had tons of drummers because I've always loved drummers. Um, and I always think it's it's the coolest thing, and it's the one thing that I wanted to be in music 
when I was young, but my parents were like, yeah, not drums. You know, you could do piano or some other shit, but not drums. What? I was best friends with the world's greatest drummer, Earl Palmer. Oh, oh God, of course. Earl Palmer and I, I knew his, his sons, Ron, Ronald and um, I forgot the other one's name, but Earl Palmer was the best. Now, for those who don't know, Earl Palmer is one of the greatest Motown drummers, and he played on tons and tons of the biggest hits of all time. So all that 50s stuff, badass. He was a yeah. studio, studio musician. Yeah, amazing. So Earl Palmer was a friend of mine. So tell us the thing about all the plays. So like, how many plays have you had worldwide? Yeah, so since I uh, started the whole Drumageddon thing, I mean, I kind of loosely began it about 10 years ago, but I really got serious you know, three years ago, and then into the pandemic is when I basically blew up. But it's 21 plays and views across all my socials. And the latest single hit 2.5 mil in, in like a month. And I haven't checked it because I've been on tour. Um, I just got back from the Midwest and South America. And where else was I? Canada. Um, I was in Europe, you know, November of last year and that whole thing. You know, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm back. Now I could actually count them up again. It's probably over three mil. Um, and Jimmy actually has been helping out with the promo. It's been freaking amazing. Super, super awesome articles coming through him. And Eileen Shapiro, got to shout her out and everything too. Best PR people in the business, man. And, you know, it's been a real blast. So so how did people find you to put you on a project? They like, go to they the just... public bathroom. It's phone numbers right on the <laughs> It is, exactly. It's like, for oh. a good time, call Drumageddon, you know? Yeah, how have you... <laughs> Like, I mean, I know you have a website, you guys, but you can go to the the drmalliance.com and his Instagram is drum again, that, I, and then it's drum again, but you got to make sure you spell it, D-R-M-A-G-D-N. Um, yeah, so that's I, me everywhere. And that's literally YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Spotify, and, and there it is. Yeah. So that's the spelling. Um, and I've gotten actually verified everywhere, which is really cool. I mean, it took me a while to go through the whole rigmarole. Um, but I'm verified on all the platforms. And when I live stream now, I hit 85,000 to 100,000 people each each time I go live, which is awesome. at my gigs, which is so crazy. Cut the, bull, so. cut the bullshit. Get on the skins. Let's uh, you know what? Look. Let's, look. Hear what Let's hear what you could do. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, I've tried that in previous you know podcasts and the one mic clips. I mean, I basically got this awesome blue mic right here. But the thing is, those mics are not set up to this system. So you won't even be able to hear it. So if you just check me out online, literally just type in drum again anywhere. You can oh, see no, 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 no. what we're going to do, though. Okay, so oh, come on, you little communist bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I am wearing red, I have to admit. <laughs> no, no, okay, so let's talk about it. So you have a brand new song. It's called, oh, it's not a brand new song. You did a, a drum again version of the song Something by the Beatles, featuring Michelle Ray, who was on Team Blake of the Voice. Um, you got the rights to record it. I'm hoping they don't shut us down when we play the video. We're going to find out. And uh, uh, But tell us a little bit about it. So how did this come about? Because that's uh, you know a huge, huge song, and just being having to have the, the permission to do it is a big deal. Yeah, I mean, that's the craziest thing. Look, Something and the Beatles are my favorite band. Something's my favorite song of all time from the Beatles. And... Uh, BMG Records is who I'm signed to. They wind up buying the catalog of George Harrison, you know, one of the main Beatles. Um, he wrote the song himself. So there's 100% ownership from BMG. So when I met with them, they're like, oh, yeah, you could you could totally do a remix if you want. I'm like, really? Yeah, yeah, it's totally legal. It's totally cool. All right. So I called up Michelle Ray from The Voice. She crushed it. I have a Grammy winning orchestra, you know, with a bunch of my friends on it. And I just put it out. And, you know, the music video, um, was really cool and special because I went to every single place that the Beatles went to when they first landed to start Beatlemania in New York. So Carnegie Hall, you know, uh, Plaza Hotel where they did the interviews and JFK and Ed Sullivan show where they played to 73, 73 million people. It's all in the music video and you can see, you know, I reverently go around and check it out. It was, I went on the Beatles tour and I filmed it. And then the actual album cover again, I redid the Abbey Road thing, you know, which is really freaking cool. You made you know, me homesick for my New York. And and right there, you can see those are real feet on the pavement. So I've got all sorts of uh, communicable and non-communicable diseases at this point from 
wearing no shoes on the pavement in New York. So and here's what I, I did I the to poll. You, you, uh, hopefully that I'm hoping that YouTube doesn't shut us down. Uh, we're going to find out because it, it happens once in a while and uh, it just depends or hopefully we can get through it. But, but either way, stay on because we will, we'll be talking either way. Um, yeah. Because for the audio, they'll we'll be able to play it for the audio on all the radio stations that, that we go on. Oh, we're not doing the video. We're gonna do the video, but I don't know if we'll get shut down or not. Probably uh, will. So we're gonna. Oh, maybe not. We're not on YouTube today, though. We're on Facebook Live, so we might not. Oh, we'll, we'll find out. Anyway, why are we not on YouTube? So, so because it, never mind, because you don't pay attention. Yeah, I went through that at the beginning of the show, the whole thing. But YouTube's I thought, not I thought you're right. No, listen, I, Mary. I no, I got it on it. Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Oh, I'm gonna beat the shit out of this. <laughs> all right. So what I want you to do. Um, I wish I you announce. I wish you were here. You announced the video. You know why I ah. wish you were here? I grab your body, hold it like a, a, a tree, and that point in your head, I shove right in his chest. I kill him with the point. No, point. so here. <laughs> don't don't go get, I'm going to get a candy. No, bar. no, no, you're not. No, no, no. I'm I'm hungry. Hungry. You don't leave bar. until we like play the song. Well, you don't want me to talk. No, so I'm, go I'm going no, no. to get. A no, going to get. No, 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 no. Okay, so, so, John, again, what I want you to do is you introduce the, the, the video. We're going to play it, and then hang on, and we're going to talk about it when it comes back. You introduce it, and Juan's going to play it. I'm going to go awesome. the awesome. okay. so, so, guys, this is the official Drumageddon remix of something featuring Michelle Ray from The Voice on BMG Records, and it's out worldwide on YouTube. It's on Spotify and everywhere, so check out the music video. Rock and roll. Yay! Strikes me like no other lover Something in the way she woos me I don't wanna leave her now You know I believe in hell Somewhere in her smile she knows That I Oh, she's gorgeous. Like all that <laughs> stuff was sent from filmmakers from around the world that um, helped me out with the last video, Get Tough, basically uh, with Manny Cabo. So this is a whole nother cycle of a bunch of footage from around the world, which is dope. Yeah. Did she's you get stuff. anywhere with the blonde? Did you get anywhere with the blonde? Did you Not with that one. I'm more of a redhead guy, as you can <laughs> imagine. <laughs> no, I like the video. If we had a different drama, I think the video would be better. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Maybe Earl Palmer. That would be actually great. I'm not sure if he's feeling that great right now because, you know. Earl, Earl has passed away. <laughs> I like love it. So first of all, I think the video is terrific. It's cool how you went to all the different places that the Beatles are. I liked it. Who was the ballet dancer person? So somebody sent you that footage in? Yeah, so that, that was, that was. Um, I think she's South African, actually. She so, was beautiful. Yeah, she's gorgeous. And her so technique, funny. impeccable technique and just that. 
you know, the beautiful moves and everything. But I, I sat down and edited it all myself. I directed the video, got all my own footage, put it all together with everyone else's and uh, came out really cool, you know, and I had to do, and this is the biggest, you know, band of all time, the biggest shoes to fail. So can't drop the ball here. So I have to make sure I get the artwork down. I get the videos down, the audio and everything. So yeah. you did a beautiful job because it's very slick. I, Thank like, you, I don't like choppy. Nice. It's quick. It red. It's smooth. You know what I mean? It didn't go better, but just graceful. It was relaxing and beautiful. So I good, how come you did such a good job for a crappy drummer? Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, everyone likes a dog, the drummer, obviously, you know, that's why I'm now a drummer, DJ, producer, music director, and artist. So then no one can say shit about it because, you know, I'm doing it all. So that's it. No, I like love it. I sleep with the producer at this show. That's why I get away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> murder by my mohawk directly into his car. Yes. Yeah, so I had a, so I have a question because like you know a lot of people who are on the voice, like what is your how is it that you know everybody who's on the voice? And first of all, we should give props to the to Michelle Ray singing, you know, the version. She did a great job. Uh, she's fabulous, she's super talented, she's pretty. Uh, so how is it that you know all these because Manny Cabo was on the voice? Yeah. Um, uh, Bell, what's his face? Bell, Jerome Bell, Ale, Ali Guercho. Um, she yeah. was Alessandra Guercho. I mean, all these people. So again, like being in the New York scene for so many years and producing people, music directing people, and drumming for people. I've worked with them all in various gigs. I'm like, oh, that voice is awesome. So let me just grab his info. Let me grab her info. Uh, Michelle actually was auditioning for record labels back in the day when she still lived in Long Island. She now lives in LA and did the voice thing. Um, I was her music director. So I put her band together. You know, I tried to, we tried to get a record deal. She didn't get one at the time. And then she wound up, you know, continuing to sing. And every song that I do for my own tracks or a remix will always be, you know, whatever great voices come to mind, I'll go through my book. Her voice came up. I'm like, yeah, she's, she's going to destroy this. It sounds so good, really emotional. It brings this depth to the lyrics that, wasn't there in the original. Look, the original is unbelievable. I still, it's still my favorite Beatles song ever, but it does something new for the new generation for, you know, um, Gen Z, pop, EDM kind of lovers. It's got a louder production that works better in the clubs and everything. So that's why I sat down to do it this way and do something different. I flipped the gender. I flipped the, um, I also flipped the, the key. It's a different key, different tempo. And the overall thing, I rebuilt the track from the ground up. So I redid all the strings. I redid all the horns. I redid, you know, everything from the ground up and then remixed it from scratch, basically. So, so yeah. who are some of your, like, I'll tell you, you said the Beatles are like your favorite. So who are some of your influences, like, growing up? Like, who, is, what kind of music did you like growing up? Well, when it comes to drummers, since we've been talking a lot of drums, Buddy Rich is my favorite drummer of all time. Uh, monster player, and he used to do really fun drum solo-y things. I consider myself the gritty, you know, movie reboot of someone like a Buddy Rich who has a crazy drum set and, you know, plays up buildings and that whole thing, but does it for a new generation. What, yeah. what about Gene Krupa? Gene Krupa is amazing, but he right. was the good looking dude with the stick flips where Buddy Rich was a little bit crazier and faster and more technical. So that's the difference between, but Gene Krupa, amazing. Uh, Carmine Apiece is another guy from Vanilla Fudge. Um, I actually know him. Yeah, and me too. Like I uh, I sub for Carmine on Vanilla Fudge gigs. So like, oh. they'll call me and just I'll just jump in and be the Carmine of the gig. And you know. So you did Mark Stein. Mark Stein is the best dude in the world. I just so saw him when, I was a, when I was a clothing designer in Florida. You know, he used to shop and, and I dressed him for a bunch of gigs, and I'm still very good friends. And he's been on the show, and I'm friends with his wife, Patty. And you know, we send Amazing. messages every day. Um, and when we lived in Pennsylvania, he was on the show, and I went to a, I've been to a Vanilla Fudge show, and then we met Carmine at, um, at NAM. Yes, we met Carmine at NAM a couple of years ago. Eileen and I did. Uh, which was a no, lot the of best. No, the best. I mean, Carmine, the whole crew, you know, that whole that whole crew is amazing. But I've played on um, different tour dates with them, jumping in for Carmine. But I've been the guy who's jumped in with a ton of different people. But now it's cool to actually have my own little space. But, you know, all the people on my tracks, I personally know, you know, they're all friends. They're all really awesome, talented people. But they're also good people. You know, I try to have everyone that has good, positive energy around me wherever I go, you know, and 
And I think it's already helped because you hear it in their takes and their tracks and you see it in the videos and it's a, a lot of positive vibes in a, in a world where, you know, stuff is not always that positive. You know what I'm saying? So I love Absolutely. Manny Cabo. So, I agree. so we actually met Manny Cabo because of you, because you had him at the So Johnny thing. And Wait a minute, uh, the Soho Johnny thing, didn't we have a problem? The room was rented for such a long a period of time. And then you are going to go on because we were going to get kicked out of the room. Am I right? No, we well, were at the beginning. Yeah, cool. yeah. No, no. Everything was totally cool in the end. No, Everyone so no, actually, no. it went perfect and happy. You know, it's great. And Soho Johnny, big shout out to him because without that, wouldn't have gotten into the whole situation with Jimmy and Eileen and putting on that really big, you know, 9-11 show. And, you know, we were all on, on the billboards, which is really cool. Yeah, we had a blast. Really we, had time. Time. we flew in for that, you know, from California and we had a great time. With oh, all yeah. So it was Johnny, Johnny calls me his kid, no, his big brother. That's right, his big brother. You gotta like love it. So who are some of the people that are like current nowadays that you listen to? Do you listen to music when you're not playing music? <laughs> That's right. actually a good one, man. Um, a lot of the time I'm analyzing and trying to figure stuff out to put it in my productions. But uh, my favorite current band right now is the band Muse from the UK. Uh, they're a big stadium band. They've had a lot of hits. Not as big over here. Uh, DJ Wise, Zed, it's David Guetta, Swedish House Mafia, Tiesto. Um, I met David know, uh, and, and Tiesto like back in Florida. They had this thing called the Dance Star USA Awards, and it was basically like dancing music, and all the DJs were there. I hung out with like Bunny from Rabbit in the Moon. I don't know. There's like all these like people, and, and it's so funny. So we walked the red carpet with like Carmen Electra, and we had a blast. And then we were leaving, and Bunny was standing on a corner with his award. He won this big award, and he was just standing there, and we – we rolled down the window and said, "Hey, you need a ride?" He said, "Yes." So he drove us, and then he introduced us to everybody, like he nice. like all the different DJs. Not that I really knew who a lot of the only DJ we know well is Tracy Young, just because I've known her for years and I did a video. Oh, with great her. DJ! But I yeah, know. I mean, so basically for me, it's any band or artist that has anthemic arena stadium hits, right? Swedish House Mafia, uh, love Bon Jovi, love you know. Um, I'll, I'll, anyone who has really big stadium hits is my influence. And I'm trying to bring that back to pop EDM, basically, you know, and good songs with really good vocals and good singers and have, you know, people really connect to it live. And, and they have been like I've toured. Um, I just got off the road. I think it was 12 countries that I just played. And then it was another 10 in November. And in the fall, I'm back in Zurich, Switzerland, and then I'm going to be running around. And if people don't, you know, have tickets to the show and can't see the show or whatever, it's all good. It's the, um, you can just jump on the live stream and TikTok live has been really, really positive and generous to me with the viewers and they keep pushing me out, I guess, because of the blue check or whatever verified. Um, but yeah, it's been hitting a lot of people. Um, and the funny part guys, I think you guys will appreciate this. What'll happen on those lives when I play in, you know, clubs or nightclubs or festivals they'll do fan fiction on my crowd. So they'll pick out a random person and be like, all right, there's this guy over there on the left, everyone. Okay, the guy's wearing flannel. Okay, he's a little older and and I don't know, he's, he's a little awkward. So we're gonna call him Flannel Dad. And they go, okay, Flannel Dad, you can get a girl tonight. Come on, Flannel Dad. And then there's like hundreds and hundreds of comments like cheering Flannel Dad on as I'm going nuts playing. And you know, after I get the, the uh, live stream, I download it and I go in, I put the comments that are the funniest up there and I put it up everywhere. It's crazy. Like, I never thought I'd be a live streamer, you know, and just like you guys, I'm sure it's like, man, you guys have a show. It's it's streaming everywhere. It's crazy, you know? We really, like love it. I actually went last night and saw, with Ron's daughters, I went and saw Tears for Fears. And mm. they filled it up 80, 85% of the, and it was a new arena, you know, and they filled it and it was amazing. Like, like when they played, everybody wants to rule, rule the world and sow in the seeds of love and stuff. People were just going crazy. <laughs> I mean, I have to, I have to tell you this story. So when I was a little kid, I loved Shout. Like it was my favorite song. I used to scream it into the hairbrush and everything. Turns out, song. I mean, that song, Shout Tears for Fears, big song. It's one of the BMG remixes that I'm able to actually do. So oh, I went yeah. through. Dude their whole catalog and I have 40 tunes that I picked out. That's going to be one of them. So you guys heard it here first. That's going to be another remix. 
No, um, you gotta do that. That will be phenomenal. Like that was that was so that was their encore, the last song they played. So they played all their songs and a bunch of stuff off the new album. And then uh, for the encore, they played um, "Creep" by Radiohead. Ah, oh, and, uh, and then they did "Shout" for the last one, and it was amazing. It was like amazing. And, you know how they always do that? They finish, and then half the people don't stay because they don't think they're coming back out. So, like, everybody leaves, and then they come back out and play Shout at Radiohead, and it was freaking awesome. The reason I didn't awesome. go is because I only go to Johnny Mantis concerts. That's not true. <laughs> it's the first concert that I've paid for tickets in 10 years because I don't ever pay. If we don't go, usually they just we get invited. Yeah, you get don't. the invites and everything, yeah, of course. But, man, that must have been worth it. That is it was totally worth it. iconic. I mean, yeah, it was freaking like awesome. Yeah. So that's well, going to be another one. And, you know, big shout out to Jimmy again and the whole world star PR and everything, but, you know, through that and then some other friends that have been helping with PR and everything, um, the drum again has gotten on this release because it's a Beatles remix. I'm sure it helped. Um, and a lot of plays and views that helped, but it got into AP news, Yahoo news, New York daily news, Broadway world, tons of EDM outlets, and then Hollywood Digest. And it's it's absurd how many places it's gotten. I've actually, I played in Nashville the other day and you got me in a Nashville music guide. And he goes, wait a second, I just saw you in a magazine. I was like, oh yeah, okay, how's it going, man? Sound guy <laughs> recognized me on the plane, um, going back and forth between one of the Midwest states. A girl, maybe like 24 years old goes, wait a second, I know you. And it's like, oh yeah, you did like the Beatles remix. It's like, ah, crap. So the press really works. And that's do you, wear, do you wear your hair up all the time, or do you like, like, let's just say, you do wear it up all the time. So you have to. I go to no day. joke. I go to sleep like this, and this will stay for three to five days if I do nothing to it. I mean, it's it's basically, oh, yeah, it's glue. <laughs> it's not Elmer's, but it's like a glue product yeah, and everything. I'd be very quiet because nobody cares about me on this segment of our show. <laughs> yeah, right. but I would like everybody to know I'm in Hollywood Digest naked oh, yeah. playing drums with an erection. Yeah. Can you do that? I mean, I don't know if my drums can handle that kind of pounding. So, <laughs> Actually, Ron's got a column on the Hollywood Digest. They just yes. asked him to write a column about all Hollywood, so he's yes. getting ready to start and writing. I, and them. the reason I haven't written the column yet was I wanted to do the best. I wanted to write about my buddy Jane Russell or my buddy Shelley Winters. I have so many movie stars that I, I love. I don't know who to select. So I have to somehow be told, write about this one. I know. So you, have, you ever put, have you put music in any movies yet? So wait a minute. I'm going to write about you one day on Hollywood Digest. I'll say, oh, the guy that thinks he knows how to play the drums. What's his name? Drag <laughs> Dragon somebody? Drag Dragon. Okay, I got a story about that, too. The Drumageddon <laughs> thing. When you type in a Google, like at the very beginning, it said, did you mean Dragon? And I was like, well, screw that. I made the Dragon my logo. So basically, yeah, literally under the D in my logo is a Dragon. And now, since all the press and being out for a while and having plays and views, now it doesn't say, did you mean Dragon anymore? Thank God. Freaking. Hey, oh, oh, yeah, I'm, you're right. And I'll say, I'll say Drag Queen is good. He's a great drummer. So wait, Drag you... Queen, I love, or a Dr. Magden is one of my favorites. Oh, so Dr. Magden's about to take the stage. I'm like, oh, that's Dr. my evil villain. Yeah. <laughs> you know something? You know something? I think I love you. You're a great guy. You have a wonderful disposition, personality. No, seriously, I'm so enjoying you on our show. You know why? You know how to take a joke. You know how to yeah. bang it back. That's New York and New Jersey people, not California, where I'm offended by every fucking thing you say. <laughs> Oh, please. New York is a, it rolls off our back. We know how to throw it back and forth and have fun. I don't, listen, that's why we're moving back to New York. I can't take the California. Oh, people. God, yeah. Please come they back, man. Me. Jesus. They all hate me. They think I'm some mean, terrible person because I tell the truth. You're not allowed to tell the truth, you know, in California. Not well, anymore. Not anymore. Not we've got not. we've got a lot of censorship. It's a bust. Oh, you got to sit it. Seven bucks for a gallon of gas. That's so funny though, because like I now I can't remember, but I put something on Facebook. Who I forgot. If I put something funny that you would do the same way as drum again, it was like who remember whore whoever saw it as whore members or something, like instead of who remembers, uh, you know, uh You're like as part of my crowd. Stop. If I had it, I would be funny. But it's You're the same way you funny. would do the drum again thing though. 
it would be the same way as like Dr. Magnet, Dr. Magnet, Dr. Magnet. Dr. Magnet. <laughs> yeah. Cute face. You got a girlfriend? Well, I mean, I have I have many people that I hang out with, and I have one girl that I'm really, really into, and she's really into me. I can't say her name because I have to keep everything private and everything. But redhead, hot piece of ass redhead, right? I mean, look, when you got it, you got to go find it too, you know. <laughs> I miss I miss the humor you have. I miss it so much. See here, you make me laugh. Here, everybody makes me cry. <laughs> really, I love the humor. I miss it. I mean, come on, New York City. We got the comedy, you know, comedy cellar. We've got all the the amazing comedians up and coming and everything. I go there all the time. You Some of them are buddies. Are, it's like, come on, are, man. You got to take a joke and you got to be able to dish it out. You have got to go out with us one night, Eileen. Oh, she Eileen is a fucking kisser. She's great, man. And uh, Billy Hess. He knows Billy. And oh, Billy is, the, Billy is a badass and great when, photographer. When we're, together, when, we're, when we're together, we pee ourselves. We can't breathe. We <laughs> have, Eileen is a riot. We have so much fun together because they're all New York. Yeah. When I'm out here with the California people, oh, man, it's so cool. Like, you know, wow, dude. And fucking dude. Everybody's a dude. <laughs> That's the thing. When they came here to California, we went to Beverly Hills and we're making videos and, and taking pictures in the bathroom where George Michael got like arrested for like trying to pick up the cop. And we're like making, you know, making fun videos and shit from it. It was hilarious. Eileen is standing near the urinal and I'm next to her. We're cruising each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're crazy. You gotta have fun. Life's too short to not Eileen have fun. Eileen Shapiro is a great sport. I always make fun of her boobs. Because oh, she was, I mean, doesn't have any. She's yeah, right. Chesty. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, really. So I make fun of her boobs all the time. Have fun with her boobs. So what's come first of all? Uh, so you're drum again every. So you're on TikTok at drum again. You're on. Uh, I know your drum again is Instagram. Are you on Facebook? Facebook everywhere. Actually, the Facebook thing is pretty funny. The press loved this track. Um, everyone that I played for generally loved this track. Friends and music people and industry people. Um, I happen to have a thing kind of go viral on Facebook randomly. It hit like 86,000 likes or whatever, but that's where the older crew jumped in and started to throw down some hate. Like the very first hate I got on this remix was on Facebook where people started to go back and forth and I had to do like witty banter back and forth to kind of diffuse some stuff. My favorite one was a guy just says, you know, blasphemy, like, awful like this is this is the worst thing in the world blasphemy and and i wrote back well i guess if you know if it's not your your cup of holy water then you know i don't know what to tell you man you know <laughs> just like you know it's it's a new remix you know look frank sinatra did it elvis did it at one time you know and and it needs to keep on being heard by the generations and it's for the younger crew on this one it's not for the you know original crew whatever so you know just trying to skew lower lower age for people on this track you should say George Harrison's ghost came to you and told you to do it, and he loved it. <laughs> oh man, that's it. or I I have a friend of a friend who um, knows Ringo really well. I'm gonna see if Ringo will just give me a shout out to be like, oh, it's a good remix. And then so one of our one of the very first guests we had on the show was uh, Gary Wright, Dreamweaver Gary Wright. Oh and, yeah, and he had just gotten off of the Ringo Star All Star Band tour when we had him on the show. This is like 15 years ago, but Ringo Star is an icon too. No, so we have, his playing. We have three minutes. Let me tell everybody. So follow Drum Again on everything, you guys. What what do we have to look forward to? Like, should we tell you got any shows like, uh, specifics on anything you can tell us? What should we tell people to go to find you? Yeah. So basically, go to Drum Again. D R M A G D N. It's everywhere, basically. Um, and I actually just got this. This is a really cool limited pressing, and I'm holding this up here, right here. And it is a limited edition oh, wow. red, red seven inch vinyl. Okay. Red. Of and course, this vinyl yeah. is, of course, it's red. You know, this has an unreleased version of something. So something is the radio edit, and then you have the one with the guitar solo on here. And my buddy Oscar Albus Rodriguez um, from, uh, he did Say Something from A Great Big World. He's the guy who played all the guitars on the oh, track yeah, and everything. Cool. And if you check out the back, back of the, uh, the album artwork here, that right here, I found Ringo's kit. It was on display at a museum. That's Ringo's kit that he played oh, at Sullivan Show. 
which is really freaking cool. And all the, the credits and everything are down here. But this is in a limited run, 100, 100 copies, and the first seven are already out. So we're down to like 93 copies left and everything. So hit me up online. Definitely check out the music video on YouTube, Spotify, add it to your playlists, you know, something. But then there's Get Tough, there's Say Don't Less, Be More, more. a ton of originals. Don't we yeah. We're in sun. <laughs> well, God, finally. Now Ron's happy to see me. Check that out. I can't do it. I don't have enough hair. Wait a minute. If I you got it too. You got it too. If use, and if you can't, you grow the beard longer and you just do it down. Yes. So I go up and go down, you know? If I use gel, I could get this up straight. Drum again, one, two, and three. So, you guys, this is Drum Again, also known as Charlie Z. Check him out. He's super talented. Follow Drum Again everywhere. Um, definitely follow him on TikTok so you can see the live streams. Check out something, the Beatles remake with Michelle Ray. Um, and just check out all his shit. So follow him on social hey, listen, media. He posts come, all the come, time. Come back again in like six months or something. I'm in, 100%. Right. Promise, I'm always around. Promise me something. When you come back, tell me that you took a couple of drum lessons, okay? Okay. You know what? Because <laughs> you think it's a drummer. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'd hit a rim shot, but you wouldn't be able to hear it, I told you. so. <laughs> oh, the next time you come back, have a microphone so we can hear you play. Oh, there you go. I mean, I can, I'll can. i connect those guys into here. Yeah, so. I think you're a You'll terrific say. guy. And I'm serious. We're, you know, we're moving back to New York in spring. So we'll be going out to a lot of things. We're going to ask you to go with Eileen, me. Billy. I mean, you're a riot. We'll be pink and we could be filthy as all hell. We could. <laughs> be, Ron likes that. We're going to have fun. That's what's up. And Riot's I, actually the name of one of my hit singles, so it is Riot. I'm fucking, I'm in. I'm in. We'll, I'm in. we'll play it. Forward to see you All right, everybody. In the Apple. We're out of time. This is Drum Again. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Care, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. And guess Thanks. what? I think you're a great drummer because I heard you in person. Thank you, man. <laughs> All right, Drum Again. Keep... Thanks. We got to go because we're out of time. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you next week. So bye. And try not to so long. Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest news that you were sent to the celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. So come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Oh.